right, why don't we go ahead and, uh, and get started? So I'd like to introduce uh, Penny Lambright. Penny has um, been speaking to Ollie for quite a number of years. I think Russ mentioned something on the order of 10 years. Uh, Penny started uh, Clutter Cleaners uh, back in 2000 uh, after leaving the, the comforts of corporate America. Uh, Penny has over 20 years of administrative experience in a wide uh, range of industries, both public and private sectors, including Walt Disney Corporation. Penny's a longtime resident of Orange County she attended Orange Coast College, Belmont College, uh, now Belmont University in Nashville, Tennessee, and Cal State Fullerton. Uh, in January 2004, Ms. Lambright was featured in a segment of Dateline NBC. After that segment aired, she received over 50,000 hits to her website, traveled to 11 states in seven months, and was featured on Fox Morning Show uh, regarding this business. In January 2005, Penny was featured in Orange County Register on the front page of the Home and Garden section in a two-page story. The story was syndicated in 26 cities. She has also been featured in numerous stories in other publications throughout the country. In early 2010, Ms. Lambright filmed a segment for TLC Hoarders Buried Alive. Hopefully none of us quite get to that point. Penny was a member of the Orange County Task Force on Hoarding and Services on the Executive Board. She is also a member of the National Association of Professional Organizers, as well as the National Study Group and Chronic Disorganization. Sounds like a group for me, actually. Uh, Ms. Lambert is also a member of the TIP International, a business networking group for the past 12 years and has served on the board in a number of elected positions, including president. She has published in Le Tip International's latest book, Le Tip Power Partners, 30 Years of Networking, Top Techniques That Turn in Sales. So I'd like, like to welcome uh, Penny Lambright uh, to Ollie. And uh, Penny, if you can unmute yourself and take it away. Good morning, everybody. Glad we have beautiful weather and parking's not an issue today. <laughs> So one of the things I usually do is have to tell you uh, like important things like where the bathroom is, but uh, you probably know where it is because it's in your home or somewhere like that. So uh, the way I like to teach is I teach if you have questions, you have to get up, you know, do your thing. Um, most of you, I can only see half of you, so I'll switch between pages as I can see all of you. But um, today it's just, I'm going to tell you about how to get organized. I'm going to give you lots of tips. The handout that you guys have is going to be something you can print out and take with you and write notes on, refer back to. My mom used to always say, you give out too much information. And I'm like, well, you know, I'd rather give out too much than, than not enough. And um, while you're there, um, um, I'm going to give you my email address. So if you start to work on projects when you're done with this and you want to reach out to me and you're not sure... Um, um, like what to do next or whatever. Um, I'll also have, um, Russ, if you can put that in the, in the uh, chat, uh, put my email in there so people can look it up if they can't read it. Um, if when you're working on a project, if you have questions or you're stuck with something, just send an email to me and we'll try and walk you through that. So the email address is info, I-N-F-O at clutter, C-L-U-T-T-E-R-S, the S is important, dot com. Uh, we actually just went re-live last night. I just updated the website and everything so you can go on there and you can also follow us on Facebook. But um, today we're going to talk about getting organized and some of the challenges and, you know, everybody's been locked at home. And so a lot of you may have gone through a lot of what you needed to get done. But today we're going to help you to uh, go through maybe some areas you haven't touched on. So 80% of what we have, we are never going to touch again. So you're sitting at home for the last year and you're looking at all this stuff. It's probably more than 80% now because a year has gone by and you haven't used it. So including our closet and things like that. But I'm going to give you a, a pass on the closet since everybody's been stuck at home for a year that um, you can, uh, we'll do that as the very last thing, but 80%. So if you think about if you're no longer, you're no longer entertaining at home prior to COVID, 
why are we keeping all the stuff that we use for entertaining, all the chafing dishes, all the serving dishes, all that kind of stuff. So if we're not using that prior to COVID, um, then uh, why do we need to keep those kinds of things? And being at home with COVID, one of the great things to be able to do is if you're, you're trying to think that your kids may want some of your stuff that you have, a great way to do that if you have multiple kids is to go through and tag everything that you're willing to let go of. And then if they come over or through Zoom or something, um, have them put a color dot representing each family member, meaning your son would be yellow, your daughter would be blue, your other daughter would be green, not every individual person in that family. Um, but then give them a dot that they can walk around and put a dot on anything that they want in your home. That way, when you're done, you know who wants what and who and what they don't want, which is the most important thing is you want to know what people don't want in your house so that those are the things that you can start letting go of. You don't have to let it go as soon as they dot it. But when you are ready to go, let it go. Now, you know who wants it. And if nobody wants it, then you can start um, at your discretion rehoming it other places, whether you donate it to a charity or to friends or families or anything. So always remember that 80% of what you have, you are never going to touch again. So sometimes in getting organized, some of the reasons are we spend too much time looking for lost items. We've all been locked at home. We're, we're trying to find things. We can't find them. Where would we put them? Um, you want to help your children or grandchildren learn to be organized. You want to stop feeling overwhelmed and having anxiety. You want to you want to feel like you have a little more control in your home or office. And some of you want to stop being the joke of your family and friends. And because you may have collections of things and they think that you're more of a collector, but more of a hoarder. And some of us want to just have more time to spend with their family and friends and be freed up to have fun. Now that we in Orange County have a little more time to be able to get out and enjoy, uh, some of us may be wanting to go out and take a walk on the beach or go watch a sunrise or sunset. And that's part of the things that you can do in order to get out and start letting things go. Some of us hold on to things that we have because it, it keeps us in the past. You know, we have things that people have given us or that we've inherited um, when people have passed and, and we feel obligated to keep it. I always like to tell people, if you have those things and they are not something that is meaningful to you, you are not honoring that person by keeping on their stuff. If your house is full before and now it's fuller because you've inherited all this stuff of other people, go through and only keep the things that make you feel good and remind you of that person but are things that you like. Don't hold on to it out of obligation. When I, both of my parents have passed and, and I had, <clears throat> excuse me, the blessing to be able to clean out the house. And, and I say it's a blessing because, you know, my parents and I were close and, and, and going through closets and drawers and things, you know, I got to find out a lot more things about my parents. But one thing I did know is my parents did not want me to have my identity theirs. And so going through, there were a few pieces that we kept that I kept um, and um, going through photo albums and everything. Um, what I did is I broke up the photo albums and I have four siblings. So I took pictures that my dad had taken throughout the years of them and their kids and divided them up and gave them back to them. One of the things my dad did was scuba dive and he had lots of pictures scuba diving and a lot of them were not in focus and underground underwater and things which were not meaningful to us and there really wasn't anybody that they would mean, be meaningful to so i let those go but the but the pieces of things that i found that were family related or had pictures of family in it i passed on to to those people but then there was a lot of pictures of people i didn't know who they were and in not knowing who they were nobody else would have known who they were so those i was able and freed up to be able to give those give those things away and not feel the obligation to have to keep those. So I let those things go. And, and my siblings, of course, got to go through and pick out the things that were important to them um, that they wanted a furniture or pictures or anything else 
that they wanted. So that is a helpful way as, as you are starting to downsize and go through those things. Look at those kinds of photo albums and books and things and see what your family members may want and ask them and start knowing where it's going to go. Do you have too much stuff in your home, your life, your office, or even your car to where you can't get in? Can you close your closet doors or do you have clothes hanging to where you can't close the doors? Do you have a, a guest room bathroom that is an extra closet and uh, all, you have clothes that are in there? Do you have th piles of magazines and stacks of newspapers you're going to go through? Well, if the last year you haven't gone through them and everybody's stuck at home, I'm not quite sure when you're going to be able to go through those. And I got to tell you, teaching to a bunch of faces where they're just pictures is kind of hard because I'm not seeing any of your reactions. But that's OK. I'll get through this. So, again, 80 percent of what you have, you are never going to touch again. So where do you start? The, in, in order to start, you want to you want to go through and and breaking down some projects. So you want to go through and make a list of your irritants and your family members are not irritants, not for this conversation. And um, walk in your front door. Do you want to be able to sit on your couch? Do you want to sleep in your bed? Do you want to do you want to be able to have a guest open and a guest over and their room is full of items. What are the things that you want to do? Some of those small things that you can start doing is putting away the things when you're finished, which for some people is always hard to do. If you know where you live, does your stuff have a home? You know, do you, you know you when you pull up in your driveway, you know where you go, but do you have a place in your home for all of your stuff? Do you have an area for all your arts and crafts? Um, if you don't, let's start finding a place where you can put it. It doesn't have to be, it doesn't have to be completely organized, but at least know where your stuff is and where if you're looking for it. So if you can't find your scissors and you know you have 12 pairs throughout the house, create one place where those things would be. And it, again, if it's a, could be a guest room closet, could be dresser drawers in a guest room, whatever works for you to be able to keep your stuff together. Make a list of things that you want to have accomplished and put things on your calendar. Don't have multiple calendars and multiple locations because what's gonna happen is Somebody's going to be sitting in their living room today watching TV and the Zoom meeting is on their calendar in their bedroom and they're going to get up and and go do something and realizing that halfway through this class, oh my gosh, I should have been I should have been doing that instead of watching TV or doing whatever. So create a one place where it's like a master calendar. And one of the ways that um the things you can do if you have multiple people in your home if you um, get a larger calendar and put each person by a different color pen. So for your husband's doctor appointments, you don't have to say John's doctor's appointments, just put in orange, if that's his color, 11 o'clock doctor's appointment. And if you're blue, then you put your stuff in blue because then you can keep track of where everything is. And if you're on the phone talking to people, you go to that master calendar and, and do it. Whether you hide it inside the door of your pantry or you put it somewhere where everybody that needs to put things on the calendar can do that and they've got a color, you know ahead of time and you're not gonna start forgetting things. So you want to stop trying to remember everything. Don't put scrap of papers and sticky notes all over the house. Put it all in one area. When I get phone calls and things that come in and I write them all down, I highlight the things that I finished. So when I go back through the pages, I can look and see that whatever is not highlighted means I haven't dealt with it yet. And somebody actually asked me, they said, well, why don't you highlight everything? And I'm like, well, because you can't unhighlight it once you've highlighted it. So whatever works for you, but make it in one area because it's too easy for sticky notes to fall off of counters or, or doors or whatever. And most importantly, try to stop doing every single thing in one day because we our life didn't get into the life of where it is in one day and it's not going to und be undone in one day. So Again, you want to walk through your house and your office and you want to make a list of the irritants. Do you want to be able to sit at your desk and not have 20 stacks of paper 
all around you? What are, what are the things? Do you want to be able to pull your car into the garage and park in your garage? So one of the things that you're going to do is when you set your priorities is you're also going to set a deadline. And then when you set a deadline, you're going to reward yourself. So um, for a kitchen project, two weeks from now is Valentine's Day. So so pick a, a deadline, Valentine's Day, St. Patrick's Day, Easter, Mother's Day, Father's Day, whatever. Pick something that you can work towards to have your deadline set. And then find a reward for yourself. A reward is going to be something for you, not necessarily something you're going to bring into the house or, or buying something, but that's something that's all about you. You know, the uh, the world's starting to open up a little bit. If you're a golfer, you know, you want to go out and hit a bucket of balls, make that your reward. If you want to go down to the beach and and take a walk on the beach, you know, the restaurants are opening. If you're comfortable and there's a new restaurant you want to try, probably not a new one, but maybe new to you, um, that you want to try, that would be something that that is a reward to yourself. It's not necessarily bringing more things into your home. And, and a lot of people are still getting magazines and catalogs and newspapers that they're not even reading or going through. And now is a great time to stop getting those and and getting off of those lists. And on page two on the handout, when you guys can get it or pull it up or print it out, is a way that you can get off of direct mail um, addresses and uh, have stuff that's not important to you take it off of their list that's coming in. You know, if you're an animal lover, you may have ordered something from one of the websites and now they're sending you emails from all kinds of other people. Clean out your email, stop those junk mail from coming in that you're never gonna read. When you do that, always do a check on who it's coming from. If you have that coming in, um, of who it's coming from, make sure the email and the domain is who it really is. And it's not a funky looking domain that they are not um, trying to fish you to get your address out of that stuff. So when we are working on things, we need to start with our stuff first before we start to help somebody else. When we want to help somebody else, sometimes it is they need to see us taking care of our own stuff before they are willing to help or ask for help for themselves. So um, you have to start in small bits of trying to work with somebody else. And um, that was a question that somebody gave us on the chat. And um, it's a tough question. You kind of have to pick your fights on that. Um, if their stuff is left in one room and it's as far as one room, close the door and be okay with that. If it's throughout the house, that's a tougher question. A lot of times when families have that and they can't get somebody in their family member to do it themselves, they bring companies from the outside like ours and other companies to come in and do it. The good thing about that is we become the bad cops and you guys still become the good cops. So we try to leave some harmony when we leave so that uh, you can always blame it on those people. And there's other companies other than ours out there. And I would just say, just be cautious in who you have coming in. Um, make sure they have a history of knowing what they're doing. Since the things on TV have come out, there's a lot of people that feel like they can um, have a company like this, but they don't necessarily know what they're doing. They charge high prices or they do their work really slow to charge less money, but in the long run, get more money out of you. So definitely do your due diligence. So stopping the pre-approved credit cards coming in on page three of the um handout is a way that you can opt out by phone or um, online. And this is a great way and uh, to stop those pre-approved credit cards and other junk mail coming in, especially if you have um, a senior that you're taking care of who like writes checks for everything and has given money to everybody in the world. And at the end of the month, they have no money for themselves because they keep giving $10 donations here and $20 donations here and those kinds of things. Um, and it's also a great way to um, keep your credit in check. So um, um, watch those kinds of things, be able to, um, yes, I can read the chat questions out loud. Not everybody knows how to access chat, perfect. Um, 
so um, when you're doing the pre-approved credit cards, if you're doing them online, if you're doing them in person and they're still coming in the mail, open up the envelopes that they have that they're sending them to. In it where it asks you for your social security number, take a black marker and mark through that. Write, remove from mailing list and put it back in their prepaid envelope and send it back to them. Don't send um, an empty envelope because they don't know what that means. Don't tear it up and put it back in because they don't know what that means. Tell them what you want to do with that piece of paper. The same way you're able to remove for telephone solicitors, um, um, there's an, a registry and, and I've had some people say, well, it doesn't work. Most of our phones these days, uh, you can stop the spam from coming in. Personally, if I don't know a phone number, I don't answer it. Um, and then once I know who it is, if I want to keep it, I keep it in my um, my my phone so that I'm not taking calls of people that I don't know. If it's important, they will leave a message. If it's not important and it's a spam, the most likely they won't leave a message. So one of the important things to do is you can check your credit every six months without affecting um, your credit scores. And the way that you do that is there, you can go to annual credit report and it will give you one, or you can go to each credit reporting agency, Equifax, Experian, and TransUnion, and request one every year. But what you want to do is you want to do one every four months. And the reason you want to do that is because they don't all report the same information, but if like Equifax, if you do it between now and April, then the next four months you'll do Experian, and in September you'll do TransUnion. And that way you're getting a one once a year throughout the year to keep an eye on it. And this won't affect your FICA scores to be able to get a credit report. But that way you can check and make sure what's on your credit report is actually stuff that needs to be on your credit report and there's not weird stuff on there. And if there's weird st stuff on there, then you will be able to find it and um, get it cleaned up. If you, if you request it more than one, a year, they're going to charge you for that. So if you split it out, that will make you um, be able to um, do that. The, the credit reports are really important to watch um, because there's so much stuff that comes in the mail and so much stuff that comes in your email. And, and now we're getting a lot of our bills online. Um, it's, it's hard to really watch what's going on out there. And um, Again, especially if you are taking over a senior's life and helping them um, and they're going to be downsizing and those kinds of things, or somebody has recently passed away. If somebody has recently passed away and you're in charge of their estate, run their credit reports immediately just to make sure that something out there is not there now and it is later because somebody was able to get their information because they were going through the trash or <clears throat> knowing that you're cleaning out. Always with information like that, always um, uh, shred it, um, even though it's only got four numbers on it. If you're going back through file cabinets and doctor's um, bills and things like that from years and years ago, make sure you shred all of that stuff. Um, shredders that are the cross shredders that look like confetti have come down in price a lot. Uh, there's also companies that you can stockpile it um, and they will come and charge you by the box. The more boxes you have, the less they will charge you per box. And then you can take it, I think UPS stores and, and uh, some of the other places have it per box um, that they'll charge you for that. But if you take it somewhere, just make sure it's a reliable place and um, that they really are shredding it. Um, some places you can watch them shred it while you're standing there, which is actually the best unless you shred it yourself. If you happen to have a straight shredder, when you are using the straight shredder and the information is like this and it shreds like that, it's great. But if the information is coming across like this and you're, straighting, you're, you're shredding it with a straight shredder, that social security number is still going to be able to be read. So when you do it, if it's like this, I like to fold it in half and then put it back through. So um, uh, that way you're being able to do it. And then when you put it in bags, you can always pour water in the bags to kind of make it um, paper mache. And one of the reasons um, you 
do that is because if you have it shredded like that and your neighbor doesn't, they're not going to sit and wait for your stuff to dry out. They're going to grab your neighbor's stuff. So it's just a, it's just an extra way to protect yourself from having, um, from being able to do it and keep you, you're safe. So one of the questions is they want to have an estate sale, but they don't want to have it at their house. Are there companies and places where it could be done? Um, I'm not aware of any. And most estate companies are going to probably take between 60 to 40, 40 to 60% of whatever you make. And then if they have to move it and box it all up and do all of that and then move it to another location and then deal with it from a different location, they're probably going to take a larger amount. Um, so you can email me info at cluttercleaners.com and I can give you a, a number of somebody that can do the estate sales. Um, if they, if you have the availability to have one in your, your yard and your garage, they can still do it that way. If it's an entire house, I know a lot of people are COVID friendly where they're doing them in small amounts and people are coming by appointment and, and doing it this way. The difference between an estate sale and a garage sale is the value of your item. If you don't have items and a lot of items over $100, um, then it's a garage sale. And when you're pricing stuff, don't price it on what you think it's worth. Price it on if you went to your own estate sale, what would you pay for it? Or a garage sale, what would you pay for it? Um, you know, I know there's a lot of pieces out there where people have paid a lot of money for stuff and then they think that it's worth it. Unfortunately, the market is dry right now. There's, there's not a lot of people out buying. Um, so the value of stuff has gone down. Um, and for some, some places, it's just easier to either donate it and get your tax benefits from it. Or if it's more important for you to get rid of the stuff, price it to go, because then you don't have to worry about bringing it back in. You don't have to worry about then transporting it to a donation place. And, um, and you're not spending your time which your time is worth money. So if you are going to have an estate sale and um, it's only going to fetch $1,500 and you're only going to get half of that, is that really worth it to you for all the time and money or not? Um, furniture resellers, consignment places. Right now, again, the world really hasn't been open. Um, it's starting to, so, th so they may start... Um, doing better but right now with the world with the world being closed um you're probably off if you do social media at all posting it on social media and seeing what you can get from that um there's all kinds of places that do it but i'm guessing a lot of them are probably still closed unfortunately so um what about clothes we talked about clothes earlier so in our closet, we have what we call the fat section, the thin section, and what I can currently wear now section. Well, like I said earlier, we're going to we're gonna talk about this, but because of COVID, uh, I know there's a tons of people who have lost weight and, and those kinds of things. And I'm guessing there's a tons of people who didn't. And their, uh, their, their section, what they used to be able to not be able to get into, they're now getting into. So in theory, the rule is if you haven't worn it in a year, let it go. Um, is it out of style? If it's things you wouldn't be seen in again? regardless of what size it is, if you wouldn't be seen in again, it in it again, why are you keeping it? Um, if it's out of style, why are you keeping it? Um, some of the things that you are um, looking at getting rid of um, and you're not sure, I would say put it in a box and put a date on it. And it within the next year, as long as the world is open in the next year, if you don't go looking for it at the end of that year, just donate it, but don't open the box. Cause as soon as you open the box, you're going to say, Hey, I've been looking for this because it's not in your site, but you really haven't been looking for it. You just kind of remember, remember where it is. But when you're organizing the clothes in your closet, I like to do stuff by color. Um, we're in Southern California. So I put all my short and long sleeve shirts together. I put the blues together. I put the browns together. But what I do do is when I do separate them by color, 
I don't put my blues, my browns, and my blacks near near each other. Um, I put other colors in between so that I can distinctively tell what colors they are because, you know, some early mornings, it's dark, you know, you don't want to turn the lights on, whatever, or you're a little groggy and you're pulling things out. And later in the day, you look down and you're like, okay, well, that's not quite the outfit I was thinking I was going to wear. But it's much easier as all of us are getting older to be able to not have the best eyesight for color. So if you put them, you put your blues and your browns and, and put colors in between maybe your tans between your blues and your browns, and then put your white between your your uh, browns and your and your blacks then you can distinctively tell that they are different like I said I put all my stuff in one color there are people that like to put all their sleeveless shirts together and all their long sleeve shirts together and their sweaters together if that's what works for you that's great and and that part of organizing is more personal um, because you're the one that has to get in the closet and and look for your items so like the shirt that I'm wearing today where would you where would you put it? Some people are going to see the black standing out and put it in their black. Some people are going to see the blue standing out and put it in their blues. That's going to be, again, whatever color. When you think of this shirt, what color, where should I put that in my closet? And that's going to be where it becomes personal for you to put it. So I actually have all my printed shirts like this all together. Um, so when I'm looking for things with splash of colors, all of those are together versus in my, my blues or my blacks or whatever. So I had somebody say that they bought and sold at the home consignment in Savvy Ranch, and they've been very satisfied. Um, they believe that when they sell it, they keep 40%. Um, and so uh, somebody else um said that was also extremely satisfying at the home consignment. And, and I believe on the consignment places, you have to bring it to them. Is that correct? Um, to where you've got to remember when you're moving that stuff, you've got to get it to them. And then when they don't sell it, um, that you have the choice of they'll donate it to somebody or you have to come back and pick it up. So just remember when you're putting furniture in consignment stores and, and things like that, that, um, that is an option to be able to do that. A lot of, uh, sometimes they do pick up is what somebody said, um, but they charge per load. Okay. So um, a lot of the dope uh, charity places um, are not doing pickups anymore. Um, I work with an organization called Patriots and Paws and it's patriotsandpaws.org. And uh, Russell, if you can put that in the chat, um, they do furniture pickup. They do have limits of what they'll take and what they don't take. And it's listed on their website. And um, they can schedule to pick things up and they'll give you all the details of to what that is. But they are currently picking up stuff where other places have closed. So if it's stuff that you need to get rid of for household stuff, they can they can help you. They can help you with that. So um, uh, we're going to start with um, medications and then I'm going to go over that real briefly and then we're going to take a break and then we'll come back. So. On your medications, um, if everybody was traveling, um, the law was, and I'm not sure if it's changed or not, but you have to travel with your prescriptions in original, um, in their original bottles. So if you're doing your Monday through Fridays, you can check those in underneath. But if you need stuff while you're on the plane, keep it in the original bottle. But if you just filled it, don't keep on the plane with you 90 days worth of medication. If you're going to be gone 10 days, keep 15 days. And the reason is, is because we all know planes go down. You know, look at the, the plane that went down on the Hudson. Nobody could pull anything off the plane and everything got ruined in the water. So try imagine refilling all of your prescriptions when that happens. So if you, um, when you get a prescription and you have existing bottles, take your new prescription and pour the new prescription into the same old bottle when you travel and leave the old bottle with the old date on it at home and take the new prescription with only a couple of weeks worth with you. So if something were to happen, you still have stuff at home. So hopefully that hopefully that makes sense to, um, to everybody on how to do that. Also check the expiration dates um, and how to get rid of them. It used to be you could take certain medications down to the police departments. 
Uh, depending on your pharmacies, you may be able to give them expired pharmacy. Um, waste management um, will take them. Again, that changes waste management um, changes um, their things a lot. And um, so you have to check with them. They'll usually tell you to put it all in like a coffee can and then put it and then bring it to them or leave it in their original bottles. If you um, leave it in the original bottles, just take a marker and block off everything of your personal information and then um, you can give it to them that way. Okay, uh, Russ put something out here that in Orange County, there is, let me see if I can go back on the chat, um, that there's an organization that um, helps Cal State Fullerton students help to get them settled in new residence. They'll pick up and they'll take furniture in homes or not. So um, Russ, if you can um, put that again for somebody that, oh, it's called HIS slash OC.org. His dash OC dot org um, is a place that you can donate um, other things. Um, what about dumping uh, pills in used cat litter? Um, waste management would probably want your stuff to go to hazardous waste, but um, check with your local ordinances to see if, um, if that's how they want you to handle it. Donating stuffed animals. Um, if they are good and clean and not dusty, I mean, if they still have the tags on, they're a little dusty, I would throw them in the dryers um, with, um, with just air to get the dust off of them. And then check your local police departments or fire departments to see if with stuffed animals, um, the new ones that are still got the tags on, if they can use them. So when they go out to domestic violence or, you know, things like that, where there's going to be kids that they can give them to. Um, Confused about traveling with meds and Ziploc bags when traveling? No. So what you want to do is if you have your Monday through Fridays where you have them all split up, um, you want to put them in your check-in luggage. With the Ziploc bags, if you don't have an extra um, container, ask your pharmacist for an extra label. So if they just give you a blank label and then you're going to be traveling um, and you're leaving medication at home, put the label on the Ziploc bag and, and the little snack ones, put the label on there, leave the medication you're leaving at home in the Ziploc bags, and then travel with the actual uh, containers that they came in. Obviously that's not gonna work for liquid, but, um, but your pills and things like that. Um, so that when you get home, you find the label with the Ziploc bag on it, and then you have your original bottle, then take those that are in the Ziploc and then just put it back in the bottle. Hopefully that clarifies, hopefully that clarifies it. Okay. okay, so here we have a question here that says, how do you help a close relative who lives in a different home that has all their rooms filled with boxes which have items that they don't need? Also tools, furniture, appliances are in the backyard. Where do we start? He's elderly. So I'm going to say politely, he's most likely a hoarder. Um, that's typically what happens. Has he had the city come out and chat with him regarding uh, the outside of his house? Um, if he hasn't, that's a good place to be. Um, if he has, then, he, and he probably wouldn't tell you where, where he did. Um, working with somebody like that is always really, really hard. Um, if they don't want help, it, it, it's really hard. Um, you kind of have to convince them that they want to have a better life and in having a better life means letting some things go. Um, sometimes there are, um, they're just overwhelmed. They don't know where to start. Uh, everything has meaning to them and, um, that's why they don't want to get, that's why they don't want to get rid of it. It's, it's also going to depend on how close you are to them. I mean, if they are willing to listen to you and they need the help, but they don't ask for it, then you could ask them if you could help them with it. Typically, when we start with somebody that has a full house, we like to start in the garage. And we do that for a couple of reasons. One, because in the garage, most of the things in the garage they haven't seen in forever and it's just kind of they throw it in there because they don't know what else to do with it 
and it's just overwhelming or people come over and they just put everything in the garage to make the, the house look great. Um, and that's a good thing because those things that are not out there, if they don't even know that they're there, it's easier to let them go. One of the other things is when you are donating their stuff um, and convincing them that they need to let it go, you need to let them know it's going somewhere. If you tell them we're just taking it down to the trash, they're not going to let you take it typically because to them there's value to it. So if you find a place that is close to their heart that, um, that they're like, yes, I can let that go. Even if to you, the stuff is trash, tell them that you're going to donate it. And it's, you're lying to them. I get it. But at the same time for their safety and, and uh, if the house is that full and it catches on fire, they're not going to be able to get out. The firefighters aren't going to be able to get in. If there's things that are um, going to, if there's a fire, they're going to heat up really fast and burn really fast or have fumes or things like that. They're going to die for their stuff. And most people don't want to die because of their stuff. So that makes it, that makes it harder um, to do that. But if a relative offers you something and you really don't want it, take it um, because it's getting something out of their house um, and they're willing to let it go. Um, it just it just makes it hard when you imagine somebody coming into your house and saying, "Okay, we just have to uh, just clear out your house and we're going to make the decisions and you don't have choice in it. That's pretty much what you're saying to them is they don't have a choice in it and you're now the new boss and you're in charge of their life. Imagine how you would feel and what kind of resistance that you would put up. So start with a conversation with them by saying, um, are you willing to let stuff go? If you're willing to let stuff go, let's start out in the garage so that we can then take what's in the garage and have space that for stuff that's in the house and we can start putting it in the house. Um, the nice thing about starting in the garage is once you get that cleared, you can use that as a staging area for stuff in the house. You can then start bringing stuff out from the house and going through it and organizing it and deciding what to keep and what to get rid of. And as you have things that are piling up to be donated, start taking them out at the time. Find, you know, if they're clothes that are in good condition, Orange County Rescue Mission should be able to take them. I think they're still taking them. If they're business clothes and things like that, uh, there's working wardrobes. Uh, they, they take things. I think they have to be on hangers and I think you have to take them to them. But check with charities that are, first of all, taking things and what do they really want? Um, there's nothing worse than you go into a donation place thinking that all the stuff you're bringing to them is stuff that they want and then they turn you away and then you're asking yourself, what do I do with all of this stuff? Hopefully that helps. Um, so somebody put, uh, they have multiple to-do lists. They spend half their day upstairs in an office and downstairs in the kitchen. Uh, consolidate notes seem to be to put them on your notes app in your phone. Um, but um, for some people, they don't use the notes app in their phone. So it's okay to have a notebook that you are able to carry with you. And that again, you just put everything in, um, in um, a notebook. And as you go through the things, you can highlight it so that you know that it's done. And again, anything that's not done, um, you can, you'll see that it's not there. And if you have stuff on post-it notes, put it in that notebook and then staple it to the page. If you staple it to the page, then the sticky part, if it's, becomes unsticky, you don't lose it that way. Um, does any charity accept used sporting goods? Um, I don't know who's taking what these days. Depending on what the sporting goods is, there's a group called um, Team RWB, uh, Team Red, White, and Blue. Uh, they do a lot of sporting things with veterans. Uh, a couple of times a year, they go to the VA and um, they will take veterans out of the VA hospitals and take them out to the beach and teach them how to surf. Uh, somebody suggested Play It Again Sam will take sporting items. 
I believe they resell them. I don't know if they give you money for them or not. So I'm not sure. Um, somebody else said uh, highergroundoc.org. It's a free program for youth based on sports, which is awesome. So highergroundoc.org, uh, check with them. Uh, okay, so for, for those that can get on the chat, Tell me the area that you are struggling in, whether it's paperwork, whether it's kitchen, whether it's clothes, and let's see if I can give you some useful hints um, to be able to help you with that. So while, while you're doing that, I'm gonna go back to um, where we talked about um, scheduling and, and making a list and giving a deadline. So when you give yourself a deadline, let's say you're gonna do your kitchen, by um, um, Valentine's Day. How are you gonna get your kitchen done and organized by Valentine's Day or whatever? Um, you're gonna go on Monday because we're gonna take a break tomorrow. You're On Monday, you're gonna go into kitchen only if the kitchen is yours. If somebody else's domain, don't mess with it because you would hate for somebody to mess with your domain. So um, in the kitchen, I want you on Monday to pull all, all of your plastics out, all the tops and bottoms, everything that's missing the tops and bottoms, go through every nook and cranny of your pantry and your cabinets and everything and pull out all of your plastics. Then I want you to go through and find the tops and the bottoms. If they don't have the tops and the bottoms, why are you keeping them? If you have like 50 tops and three bottoms, you know, and start going through and, um, and, getting rid of those. Then on Tuesday, I want you to go into your pots and pans and then go through what are you still using? Why do you have three of the same size, especially if it's only you? Why do you have three of the same size? Can you let stuff go? Can you donate some of that stuff? And then Wednesday, I want you to go into your pantry and start going through your food, looking at things that may be um, expired and getting rid of them. Things that, um, um, you bought because you thought it was a great deal. It's it's not expired. And you're like, yeah, I'm never going to really use this stuff. Go ahead and find a place where you could donate the unexpired food to. Um, so if you take your kitchen and you break that up uh, a little bit at a time, uh, could you get that done by Valentine's Day? The same way with your paperwork and your other things. A another day, you're going to go through all of your utensils and your, your um your spatulas and your whisks and all those kinds of things, put them all out on the counter and then put back the ones that you actually use and the ones that are your favorites. If you have utensils uh, and things like that, that you're not using and you bought from, from someplace because you felt obligated to go to a friend's party and buy something and you're never going to really use it, let that stuff go. Don't hold on to that stuff. If you are, um, if you only use your pressure cooker once a year to do your corned beef cabbage, uh, why is it in a spot that you're always having to move it out of the way? So um, if you decorate for the holidays and that's the only time you use it is for St. Patrick's Day, after St. Patrick's Day is over, put it with your St. Patrick's Day decoration. So when you pull that stuff out um, to decorate, there will be your pressure cooker. But if you were looking for, um, if you're looking for it during the rest of the year, at least you know where you would find it. I like to think of things in terms of real estate. So for me, wherever I am, whether it's in my office, anything right here is Balboa. Okay, that's expensive real estate. That means I need to get to it right away. I use it enough. Things that I don't use very often um, go out to Bakersfield. Bakersfield, typically most people, unless you live there, you drive through, you stop, you stretch your legs, you get something to eat, you get some gas, whatever, and then you keep going. So you want to take things and put into Bakersfield. Bakersfield could be your guest closet, guest room closet. It could be in the garage. It could be someplace where it's not high real estate. Um, and that's gonna be for the things that you hardly ever use, but you're not really, um, you're not ready to let it go yet. So, but at least if you know where those things are, you know where to find it. Um, if you have those kitchen cabinets that are like in a corner and stuff gets shoved all the way in the back and they're really hard to get to, 
um, because, you know, none of our knees are the same uh, like they used to be. If they're really hard to get to and it's on the bottom and you you have to get a five-year-old to climb down there and get it, move. think about considering moving that to Bakersfield in the garage to where it's easier to use for. Um, another thing you can do is on the inside of your cabinet door, take a piece of paper um, and put it on the inside of the cabinet door and put um, put a list of what it is in that cabinet, especially because if you can't see it and it gets shoved to the back. So if you're looking for your crock pot and you're like, where is it? You can't find it because it's been shoved all the way in the back. If you open the cabinet door and it says crock pot, uh, then at least you know it's in that cabinet or somebody's putting stuff away for you, they know where it belongs. So hopefully that helps. Um, how do paperwork? Typically things that we keep for paperwork for, um, we need to keep for seven years. And in our handout, uh, there's a list of paperwork and how long to keep things um, going in on um, page, did I miss that part? Oh, uh, on page four is a list of how long to keep paperwork. The general rule of thumb is seven years. Um, seven years from the last time you filed your um, taxes, if you do the long form. So what you wanna do is, unfortunately, tax season is gonna be coming up soon. Everybody's gonna be getting ready for taxes for last year. What you wanna do is all of the forms and all of the receipts that go where 2020 taxes you wanna to put together. So if you were to get audited, you just hand him all the receipts and anything that goes with it. If you don't write it off, why are you keeping it? Why are you keeping the uh, credit card bills from going shopping or online shopping if you can't write those things off? Um, but again, the general rule of thumb is seven years from the last time that you filed. I go through once a year to my file cabinets and I may keep things the whole year, but at the end of the year, I go through and get rid of the things that I don't need uh, for your taxes. Um, let's say you have animals and you no longer, some of them have passed away and you have all their medical stuff and, and all of their uh, licensing things. Uh, you don't need to keep that stuff anymore. Uh, one of the things is, is hard is every time you see it, you kind of, get heartbroken up again uh, because you keep seeing what that is. So um, file things that make sense to you. Um, there are people who every single, they've got a file for every single thing when they can actually combine it. Name the files of things that make sense to you. Uh, if you're filing it, uh, you have to find it. When we work with you and we're filing stuff, we ask you, if we leave here and you're looking for this piece of paper, what makes sense to you to be able to find it? So let's say that you have um, three insurance policies with one company um, and one is for auto. Will you put it under the name of the company, dash auto, or will you put it under vehicles or automobiles or the name of the automobile to make of the automobile and then put insurance. So um, um, whatever's gonna make sense to you, because if we do it what makes sense to us and we leave and you can't find anything, we haven't done our job because it needs to be easily accessible to you. Um, there are some programs out there, I think called Paper Tiger, if it's still around. It tells you to put a number on everything uh, on every file and inhabit by a number versus uh, the name of what it is. So for me, I do banking. Um, all of my banking goes into one file. Some people want to put, if they have three different bank accounts with three different banks, they want to put it under each um, company, which is great. Utilities, the same thing. If you don't write off your utilities, why are you keeping your utilities? And for me, uh, the simplicity, the simplest thing for me to do is just write utilities at the end of the year, I then go through and I get rid of them. But rather than California, uh, Southern California Gas, Southern California Edison, Verizon, Time Warner, whoever, um, instead of having all those different files, I only have one. So if I'm looking for something, I know where to find it. And it's easier for me to file because it's like utilities going utilities. This is where it goes. Um, why is home improvement seven years? 
Home improvement, um, if there are major things for home improvement and you're gonna be selling your house, you need to keep those things for longer. Uh, if you're talking about receipts for like painting and you know to pay for the paint and do, do those types of things or like a plunger for the toilet or little things like that. Um, home improvement is for major, major, major things um, for when you go to sell your house that they have receipts that you're able to, to keep that. Um, the best way to get rid of old bills for somebody without a shredder. Um, you could tear it up in pieces. Um, and then again, if you have cat or you drink coffee or whatever, uh, put your cat litter in it and add water. If you drink coffee, put your coffee grinds in there and add some water. Um, otherwise, uh, if you don't have a shredder, there is places that you can go to um, get the shredding done. Um, but tearing it up in smaller pieces um, or just tearing off the corner of what you have that may have your account number or your address or anything like that. Um, if you um, do fires in your fireplace, be cautious, but you could put it in there. Uh, if you're gonna do that, make sure on your chimney that you have uh, one of those things on top of your chimney to keep the things from flying out. I forget what that's called, um, but that's a, a good way to do that. Somebody asked questions about doing a yard sale. So when you're doing a yard sale or a state sale and you're gonna be doing them yourself, you have to put a value to what is your time worth. Uh, some people like to do them just for the social stuff, which is great. Um, but um, what is your time worth an hour? So let's say your, your time is worth to you $25 an hour. So you're gonna have four or five hours to set up. So that's 125 hours. Then you're gonna have the time, let's see, four hours of, um, of setting it up and spending the whole day. So that's 225 hours, $225. And then let's say it's gonna take you two hours to tear down. So we're at $275. Is it worth $275 for your time? If it's not, then donate the items. If it is and you like the social, you know, being social and being out and just, you know, kind of being out in the world and, and doing those kinds of things, then it's great. But you have to price on the, the things on the price of what it to go away. Um, you don't want to have to bring everything back in the house. So you may have paid $2,000 for a dining room table and chairs. At this point, it's used. And at this point, if you get $100 for the set, take it. Because if you don't, you have to then take it back in the house. And then you have to take it and worry about where it's going to go and what you're going to do. Uh, price the things to go away so that you don't have to deal with it again. I'm not saying don't haggle, because if you can get, get a little more, get a little more. But don't so, price it so that you can't get rid of it. Because at the end of the day, you have to deal with anything that's left. So uh, somebody had said they net about $100. Um, it's just going to depend on what you have. You know, if they're toys that are broken and all the parts aren't there and all of that kind of stuff, you know, I mean, you've got to really consider what it is that you're putting out there, if it's really worth donating or honestly, if it's really worth putting in the trash. Um, if most people aren't going to pay for it at a yard sale, um, then you still have to deal with it. And you have invested almost $300 of your time to get rid of that stuff. Does that explain it enough? So I think I may have missed a couple of things in the chat. So um, Ken or Russ, if you can throw them back down and I, if I missed anything, because um, I don't know how to expand my chat. So um, we talked about clothes. We talked about traveling with medications. Uh, how many of you know that makeup has a timeline? Now I can guarantee all of my makeup I have needs to be thrown away. Because in the last year, I haven't used any of it. So, um, and I don't use it that often, but my makeup needs to just go away because I don't, I haven't used it. So, but there is a timeline to how long to keep things. Um, and um, mascara is three to six months. Blush powder is two years. Lipstick is uh, a year to year and a half, uh, those types of things. So one of the things if uh, you're trying on lipstick and it doesn't just glide on, but it kind of goes, uh, 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 it's time for new lipstick. Uh, it's If it's starting to smell bad, any of those kinds of things, if your concealer and your liquid things, uh, if you keep shaking it and it never comes back together, 
um, it is um, time to get rid of that and um, just go through the stuff, you know. Um, honestly, if you're not wearing it, there's no reason to keep it. Um, somebody put, for things of low value, they've set them out on a sidewalk and set free and they magically find a new home. Um, sometimes they do. Uh, sometimes if you, if they're big things and you wanna get rid of them, put a price on them and then leave them outside overnight and they'll find a new home. And the reason for that instead of free is because there's value. So sometimes people will come by at, at night and look at things that people that they have outside. And if it says free to them, there's no value to it. But if you forgot it outside and it says $25, they may take it because at least it's got a value on it than free. So um, um, you may consider that for some of the bigger things that, that won't go away. Uh, listed on page six, when you guys can get to the handout, there's all kinds of places to donate. Again, we talked about women helping women or working wardrobes. There's women helping women. Um, it talks about they the, what they need, uh, youth shelters, homeless shelters, those kinds of things. Um, for those of you who are animal people, while you're going through and looking for um, things for animal shelters, uh, old towels, um, especially with the rain and things these days, towels and blankets, heating pads, um, uh, newspapers, um, they won't take rolls and rolls of carpeting. But if you cut the carpeting, check with them first. But if you check carpeting, cut the carpeting into like two to three foot squares, um, they may be able to take those because a lot of the shelters, the animals are sleeping on the concrete. Um, and if you cut the carpet down into two to three feet squares or four to five feet squares, they may be able to take those and throw them into the kennels that are concrete and they may be able to use those, but check with them before you go to all that work to see if they can. Um, the same way with cleaning supplies. If you have some cleaning supplies that you don't like the way it works or whatever, check with the animal kennels to see if they can use them to clean out the, the, um, the kennels with and those types of things. And that's a good way to get rid of cleaning supplies that you don't need. Um, a lot of the things that we have listed here are, you know, for places that are open, which unfortunately a lot of them aren't. So right now they may not be a good place to, um, to take to. Typically libraries uh, will take stuff. They also have friends of the library um, that will take them and then they sell them. But if you have some new assisted living places that have been built in the last year or two years, check with them because they may have an area for a library, but they may not have books to go in the library in some of these assisted living places. So check with them on some books that you have to see if they may be interested in taking some of your book collections and things like that. Because um, for those who are living in assisted living or senior communities, um, they look for those kinds of things to be able to, especially because the libraries aren't open, um, to be able to go in and check with them. They may also take DVDs, uh, CDs and stuff like that, but check with them before you, before you go out uh, to them. Um, so we've got cell phone, uh, accessories, batteries, and chargers. You can take them back to um, where you've bought them uh, to re-donate them to. You can um, donate them to places that will get them to only dial 911 for men and women of domestic abuse. Uh, they will get them working and then they will hand them out to men and women that have been in domestic abuse so that the only thing that they'll do is dial 911. So if they're in a problem, uh, they can dial 911 for help. So that's a, a great place. Uh, listed on page six is uh, animal shelters in the Orange County area. Again, check with them to see what they will take. Uh, kitten food, uh, collars, litter boxes, those kinds of things, um, and see what they're looking for. And um, uh, so let's talk about hazardous waste. How many of you know that hazardous waste, makeup is considered hazardous waste? We can put it on our face, but we're not supposed to throw our makeup in the trash. We're supposed to take it to hazardous waste. Don't ask me why, but that's what they say. So the hazardous waste places are typically open uh, nine to one on Tuesdays, Thursdays, uh, Tuesday through Saturdays, if it's not raining. 
Um, on page seven is the four major places in Orange County of uh, who and what they will take. Um, they don't, um, don't mix your paints together. Don't mix your chemicals together. They will take up to 15 gallons at a time. Um, so if your trunk is full and you have paint containers and they're not completely full, you should be fine. You can always make a second trip um, to them, um, but they don't cost for you to drop things off. You leave them in your trunk, you drive through. They typically ask you what your zip code is. Uh, you tell them what zip code you are. They'll open your trunk, they'll take it out and uh, then you just drive away. They will also take those old big TV boxes. Uh, the, the, we call them anchors that really, they may still work, but nobody really wants them. Um, and uh, they will take those. So if you can get them into a vehicle, uh, they will take them. So um, eyeglasses, lens cases, places like that. Um, you can try your going back to your doctor and see if they will take them. And then um, you can try the Lions Club um, will take them. And so does Lens Crafters. Uh, check if you get your glasses from Sam's Club and Costco, if they will take them back. Um, and then you can donate to the, them um, and they will take your, your cases and stuff. Any questions? I'm getting ready to uh, go to page seven on how to handle things that we're letting go of. Russ and Ken, did I miss any of the questions that somebody asked in the chat? I, I think you've gotten uh, most of the questions. Okay, so yeah, Lions Club has a box in the optometry department at Brea Walmart. For those at the Brea Walmart area, uh, you can take your glasses and drop them off. Um, I think Walmarts usually have optometry too. So uh, check with them um, to uh, get rid of uh, your glasses. Okay, how do we dispose of extension cords? If they're, if they're not working, um, you, can, you should be able to throw them away. If they're still working and you just don't need them, you can donate them. Um, if your city does any kind of metal recycling, um, you can throw them in that. Um, Check your um, on your recycling trash cans. See if they'll take those because there's metal in them. I'm not sure if they do or not. And I think different places have different things, but usually they will strip them for the, uh, the copper and the stuff that's in them. Um, if they're not working um, and they're shorting out, cut them in a number of pieces, just so if somebody does go through your trash, they don't take them and get hurt the same way if you were going through tools and things and um, you've got power tools that are shorting out and things like that, um, or got wet or something like that in the rain, cut the cord so that people won't, and cut them up close to uh, where they go into the power cords. Microwaves, the same thing. If the microwave caught on fire and it doesn't work, cut the power cords. If things are still usable, um, then you don't, and you're going to put it out for people to take. Um, if you've got a lot of metal stuff like that, depending on your neighborhood, there are typically people who will drive around looking for metal um, out like the day before trash day that you can just uh, uh, put a box out there. And a lot of times they will come in and uh, look for the metal. Again, the, the, if you've got old tools that are power tools that are mostly metal, when you cut the extension, co the cords on it, you can put that in a box. And a lot of times the, the metal recycler people will drive around uh, if your trash company doesn't, um, doesn't do those. Okay, Placentia Library City Hall has, or at least had, locked boxes, containers for old medications in the parking lot. Yeah, so um, check with them to see if they still do before you drive down. Uh, some of the police departments had them. If you're gonna call the police department, call the non-emergency number or their community service. They should have an officer that works with the community. Look for them. Um, also, if you have uh, near you some of the, um, pharmacies that do the compounding of, um, of prescriptions, meaning they, they put the together themselves, a lot of times they will take uh, your prescriptions um, also more so than some of the bigger pharmacists. Um, check with whoever your doctors are. Some of the doctors do what they call uh, doctors without borders. And if they are, if they are getting ready to go and do that, 
Um, they will take your medication um, that maybe you're not using anymore and uh, they block out your number and then you want to keep them in the original bottle. So if you can either cut the label off or take a black marker and cross out anything identifiable, your um, medical ID number, your name, anything like that, but leave what uh, the prescription is and check with your doctor to see if they know anybody that's doing Doctors Without Borders because they can always use those things when they go uh, to other countries to be able to use those prescriptions. Any other questions or suggestions? Okay, so we're, we're getting ready to wind up here. We're um, a little early, but um, I will be here to ask any questions. Um, hazardous waste, we talked about how to get rid of it. So we talked briefly about you have things that um, you want to get rid of, but you're not sure how to get rid of with your family. We talked about um, having color dots for every family that's represented. So after you do that and the family comes in, you go through and you notice that you have three or four, three color dots or four color dots on a bunch of things. How do you decide who gets it? You know, you don't want to be, well, mom loves you more than mom loves me. So um, how you do that is basically in, in a family somewhere, somebody's got a little more um, drama than other people. And you want them to be the one that you say, okay, come over. Um, we're going to pull a coin out of your pocket. Okay, pick two colors. Heads, it's this one. Tails, it's this one. Who wins until it gets down to one color dot? Um, and then you let that person be the person who, who picks the heads or tail, who picks which two colors are it until it gets down to one dot. So then mom is not the one that is picking and choosing or dad's not the one picking and choosing that Susie gets more than this person or that person. Um, if that person doesn't get the things that they want, then it's actually their fault because it was their coin. It was their flip. It was them that was doing all of that. So there can't be any judgment of mom loves you more than she loves me. And that can take out some of the, um, some of the politics and the drama when it comes down to doing stuff like that. And, um, that way you, you have people that are um, getting the things that they really want. And, and sometimes people that are um, want, only want a couple of things will then say, you know what, I'm willing to take off. I'm willing to take off some of the things that I don't really want. It would just would have been nice or that was meaningful to them. So when you're downsizing anybody's house, it's always hard. It's always hard to decide who wants what, who you're going to give it to. And, and this will make it a lot easier. And, uh, you know, you guys are all on zoom, you know, call your family members, zoom through your house, like on your phone and going, okay, if they can't get to you, it's going, okay, I'm going to give you yellow dots. Let's walk through each room and each cabinet or whatever, the China cabinet or whatever, tell me what you want. And then you can put a dot on it that way, if they can't come to you. And then when you're ready to let those things go, um, it's a it's a perfect time to uh, be able to let those things go. So talking about taxes, we um, on the handout, there are um, information about the value of what the IRS will like let you write things off. So when you donate stuff, um, you want to know what will the IRS let you write it off. And there's new laws this year, so you're going to have to check those out with your accountant. But a lady's blouse is anywhere between $2.50 and $12. If you spent $300 on a lady's blouse, the most you're going to get out of it for your taxes is $12. So either give it away to somebody that will really enjoy it or wear it a few times so that you can at least get feel like you've done it. But regarding your taxes, the most you're going to get is going to be uh, $12. When you're going through um, and donating things, feel free to make copies of this stuff and then just inventory this, what you have for this. So when you could place this with your receipt. So who's ever doing your taxes, they kind of know what the value of what your stuff is. Uh, and that will help you. That'll also help you to decide if you're going to do a, um, a yard sale or an estate sale. This is kind of what the value of what stuff is worth according to um, the IRS of uh, what that you could write it off for. So one of the last things we're gonna touch on unless we have some more questions um, is a self-examination. Am I a pack rat or a hoarder? 
Um, and there's on page 12 is, uh, 11, I'm sorry, is questions that you ask yourself um, after reviewing your questions, you might want to think about doing some soul searching, or if you're working with pack rats or hoarders, uh, one of the questions is, do you have more than one organizing book that you've read, but you can't apply it to your life? Um, have you had somebody come in and help you get organized only to find yourself in a worse position? Because now you, you can't find everything. It's organized for other people, but it's not organized for you. And that's why it's important that when you bring somebody in to help you, they organize the way that makes sense to you. Because again, you're paying somebody to do it, but if you can't find anything when they leave, you're, you're, that's not good for you. And, and who's ever going to work with you needs to make it work in a way for you. Um, are there safety issues in your house that can't be addressed because of the abundance of treasures? Uh, do you have a roof leak and there's so much stuff in your house, you can't get to it to uh, get the roof fixed or your stuff is getting wet. I mean, we just had some major rains. For those that have abundance of stuff in your house, look and see if you have roof leaks. Look and see about getting rid of the things that are getting ruined and the mold and the mildew and the things like that, even in your garage, even in your yard storage areas. Check and see because those are going to become unhealthy with the mold. Um, and uh, that's only going to make it worse when you work in there. And also, if you are bringing somebody in to work for you, they're going to charge you uh, more if it is hazardous conditions. And hazardous conditions are the mold and the mildew and rotting things and, and fecal matter, whether it's animal or human or things like that. That's hazardous. And they're going to charge you a lot more money than... Um, just coming in to do basic organizing. And, and a lot of times people have critters in their garages and things that they're not aware of because the areas that you live in, you may live near the hills and things and you might get some uh, uh, field mice and things into your garage that you're not aware of and they're eating some of the things that you're wanting to preserve. A question here was Kaiser Pharmacies will give you a large plastic bag and you put your old pharmacy in it and then you mail it to them. So that's a that's a good way. Uh, we did get a question about uh, the fees, uh, the charge for our services. Um, so we charge uh, for one of us 50 an hour, for two of us 90 an hour, for three of us 120 an hour. We ask you to set a budget. Uh, we work in at least four hour increments at a time. Uh, we can do like from 10 o'clock to two o'clock. We can do like one to four o'clock. Um, so uh, one to five o'clock. Uh, but it has to be at least four hours at a time. If we have to buy any supplies, we give you the actual receipt. So we don't do a markup on that. And uh, then if it the job requires more people, um, then we uh, charge differently for that. And um, we can give you referrals if you've got to have dumpsters or things like that. And then you pay directly for those things. Uh, we don't do any kind of markup on any of that stuff. Again, you can always email me um, with any questions and that email is in the chat. And it's also on the handout if you have any further questions regarding that. So are you, let, are you afraid to let people in your home? Some people don't wanna let people in their home because of how full it is. And they're afraid that they're going to um, judge them for uh, not being able to get into the house or how bad it looks. You know, a lot of times people will have a, a, a crazy Aunt Regina who's very eccentric and, and, and um, things like that. And, you know, she's the joke of the family because of the way that she lives. That could be you or that could be somebody else that you um, um, do that. So, so a question was, I see many beat up trucks that are filled with mainly appliances and junk, metal junk. Apparently they make money with all the metal junk. Yes, they do. So for those of, and that's why their trucks are so beat up. They don't wanna put a nice truck and then get it all beat up. But so they go, there's a place in, off the 91 called SA Recycling and other places that do metal recycling. A lot of them will take the time to strip the metal into different kinds of metal because the different metal has different pricing and they will take it or they'll just take their truck in and they'll get whatever it is that they do that. So um, for some people, if you've got broken appliances that aren't working and not being repaired, worth being repaired, 
Um, you, the charities don't want those. Honestly, they if it's not working, let it go uh, to recycling um, because the charities aren't going to spend the money to replace and repair something. If it's just the ice maker, that's a little different. If it's um, you know your refrigerator is not cooling anymore and it's going to have to new, have a new processor or whatever it's called, and it's going to be a couple of hundred dollars. You don't want to spend the money and a charity is not going to spend the money. And now you're, you're, um, you're causing the charity to spend money for stuff that they can't use. So um, that's how the metal guys typically will make their money and they'll drive around and, and you'll see some of them. They're pretty crazy on how full their stuff gets. So, and how they drive away, but um, that's how they make their money. So um, is it necessary if you had to climb out of your windows at your home, could you get to your windows? Do you have to climb over stuff? If there was a house fire <clears throat> and you had to get out and the only way is to get through a window, can you get to that window? Or is it piled up with stuff in there? Um, if you're on the second floor, do you have an access to get, if you have a porch, to be able to get out to your porch easily? So if there's a fire, can the paramedics roll up to your second your second patio and put their ladder up there and you're right out there ready for them to get in or through a window? Or is there so much stuff in your house that you couldn't get out? which also means people can't get in. They can't get in to take care of you or to help you. And with so many houses burning, um, fire departments now are not going in um, because of their, their possibility in hoarding houses to get hurt and have stuff fall on them. So um, they are, different agencies are taking a stand to just not go into a house when it's a hoarding house or a backyard or do anything like that. They're just trying to keep the fire at bay from not um, spreading to other properties and things like that. So um, you keep buying things because, at, and they you bring them home and they keep getting lost in your house. Um, do you keep buying things for other people and they never get them? Do you have all kinds of birthday presents and things for your son and and they were for when he was a teenager and now he's 45 and he has his own son. Do you still have all those things that you're buying from him, but you never got around to getting from him, getting to him? So those might be some questions that you are, you could potentially be a pack rat or a hoarder. Do you keep buying things just in case you might need them? Um, you know, those are just some of the things that uh, you might, you may want to ask yourself, you may want to ask somebody else that um, is in your family, could they be a pack rat or a hoarder? Uh, there's all kinds of books out there um, to learn how to do this stuff. And sometimes when companies like ours come in, sometimes you guys just need somebody to keep you focused. And we're more like of a babysitter more than doing anything else. But when you hire companies to do the work, you should be working alongside of them, not just like throwing them in a room and saying, you decide. Because at the end, you're not going to be happy because they're going to get rid of things that are important to you and uh, you really didn't want them to go. Typically, when we work with uh, companies the way we do it is we give you, we make piles, stay, go, and uh, uh, give away. So things that need to stay, we go in and we thin out things, things that are trash go to trash and things to be donated or things that you need to pass on to somebody else, um, pass them on to somebody else. And that's how we do it. But we also leave you, if necessary, we leave you a homework pile. And the homework pile is, let's say we're working with your clothes. You don't want to like necessarily go through all the clothes while we're standing there. Some people do, but um, some of you want to be able to go through your clothes and try it on and take the time to check each piece. And then we leave that homework for you. So if we're going to be coming back multiple times, then um, you uh, we'll give you that pile to where you can say, okay, I've tried this on this stuff. I want to donate that stuff. I don't know why I was buying uh, or it should be trash. And then this is stuff I want to keep. And then once we've determined that, then we organize it as it goes back into your closet. So uh, we're able to um, help you with that and, and go through and physically, physically do the work for you. When we do work in a garage, we like to have two people. Um, and the reason is if you have stuff up in an attic, we're not going to ask you to climb up the ladder to get in the attic. We're going to pull stuff down again, help you to go through it. You know, if you need to have shelving put up, we can do all of that. Uh, again, you buy the stuff. So um, just check 
and make sure that the companies you're working with, if you're going to hire people, that they're insured and they're bonded and that it, they're there to also protect you. Um, when my team comes in, uh, they come in, they don't bring their person, they may have an apron on or they may have their phone in their keys, um, but that's all that they should be bringing in. They should not be bringing in bags of stuff with them unless there's supplies. Um, and that way things don't disappear uh, that you don't want to disappear. So any questions? None have come up, but with any of that, any areas I didn't touch on that you may need help working with? So if you're not sure how to use the chat, feel free to raise your hand. I can't see any of you at this point. My chat's in front of my face, which is fine. <laughs> but I, if you're raising your hands, I can't hear you. And uh, yeah. you can unmute yourself if you can't get to chat. Yeah. So if you raise your hand, I will see it and call on you. And I know I went a little bit fast on things, and that's why the handout's perfect for you guys, because a lot of what I talked about is in there, except for like the little stories about working with people. Let's see. So, so I'll bring up one. Is there any tips just to get started with this process? That can be a long process, and, and sometimes just getting started is the hard, hardest. Yeah, it can be. Um, um, the one question that came up when you go to Home Depot, you see trucks with signs that they say they'll help you take your junk away or clean up. Are they reliable and how much do they charge? I can't answer that. I don't know them personally. Um, you're, you have to do your due diligence on anybody that you hire. Again, you want to make sure that um, they are, if they're coming into your house and on your property uh, and they get hurt on your property, they can sue you. So you need to make sure that you are safe and that you're protecting yourself. So do your due diligence on them. Um, you know, check and make sure that they, um, they, they've got that. If the stuff is out on the street, you've already pulled it out and they're going to just load it up. Ask them up front what they're going to charge you up front to haul it away. Um, so that when you're done, you're not surprised that they don't start with $125 and at the end they're like, oh yeah, we decided it's gonna be $300. Um, get that all up front. Uh, somebody said they used a junk collar, it was $500. They came in the yard, they failed the truck and that's when they were moving. Uh, another one was every time I get a new hobby, a volunteer project, I acquire at least one archive box of materials, I'm running out of room. So on that one, um, if you're not continuing to do those crafts or that volunteering, start going through and figuring out what it is that you really need to keep. I know a lot of times back in the world when uh, the, there were conventions, people would um, come back from conferences with bags and bags and bags full of stuff that they were going to go through one day and catalogs and all that kind of stuff. And they never did. They just make piles in their house because they're going to go through it or they're going to read about this or they're going to read about that. Uh, go through what it is that you have for all those different opportunities and see if you really need it. See if the stuff is found online. If it's found online, um, then um, know that it's there. If you have a scanner and it's stuff you want to keep, scan it and put it into your computer. Again, name it something that you're going to be able to find it when you need it. But don't become a hoarder on your computer. And make sure if you have a lot of stuff on your computer, you get a backup, an outside backup that if something happens um, and that you have a backup of all your stuff because the computer is only as good as the hard drive when it's working. If the hard drive goes down and you don't have a backup, you lose everything. Somebody said they paid about $1,500 for three loads when cleaning from Junk King. Uh, there's a 92-year-old with a house full. She's reluctant to let things go. How should I approach it? carefully. Uh, again, find out what she's willing to let go of and start small and start go with those things. Uh, she probably thinks that she's going to need that stuff someday. For crafts, art supplies, elementary schools and teachers are happy. Yes, absolutely. Uh, check with any teachers you may know. Um, schools are starting to open up. See if they can use them. Uh, how can I get art appraised that isn't high end or valuable? Uh, the first thing you want to know is what are they going to charge you to appraise it? Uh, the appraisal may, may be more money than what it's worth. Uh, do a search on eBay 
uh, for things that have sold. See if you can find art from the same artist or whatever. Don't go and look and see what it's currently selling for. See what it's sold for, because that's what the value is, is what somebody's willing to uh, pay for it, um, is what it's sold for. So on any of those sites that sell things, find out what they actually sold for, not what it's listed as. Uh, somebody said they've been purging paper for the last 10 months. It's been a grueling project. It's important for me to pace yourself. Absolutely. And focus on your goals. Absolutely. So if you've got files, cabinets and file cabinets and file cabinets of stuff, do one drawer at a time. Take your time. Go through it. But re the reality is 80% of what you have, you are never going to touch again. Do you really need that paperwork? If you did your master's and you have all the paperwork from all the edits from your masters and, and you did that 50 years ago, are you ever going to need any of that ever again? If not, let it go. So that's how you have to pick and choose what you're choosing to keep and what you're choosing to get rid of and set your goals for yourself. But always remember when you get that one file cabinet done, go out and do something. Go out and get an ice cream or, or take a walk around the park or do something you wouldn't normally do to reward yourself because that's going to um, get you to keep you motivated and going through. But as you're getting rid of things, don't go out and fill it back up with new stuff because otherwise you're going to be in the same position. Anyone could help me with combining several computers content into one. There are companies that can do that. Um, check to see like students uh, that are working and getting their degrees in, in working with that. Um, uh, th those are you, uh, Cal State Fullerton may have some students that can help you with that. Otherwise there may be companies out there. I don't know anybody particular. Um, uh, real estate, do I need to keep it if I exchange properties? check with your accountant um, um, on anything. If you're ever audited and you have an accountant, they're going with you to the audit. So check with them on what they're going to be comfortable in what you need to keep um, because they're going to have to prove it. Real estate, I would check with them also because I'm not an expert in exchanging of real estate property and I do not want to lead you in the wrong direction. <laughs> Anything else? Antique stores. Can you take your old furniture and will they tell you how much they'll pay for it? Um, you can take it to them. What I would do is see if you can take pictures first to them and see if they're interested. Uh, there used to be a bunch of places down in downtown Orange. Um, I would take pictures, see if they're interested in it, uh, get some close-ups and... Um, see if they what they will take for it i don't know that i would suggest you haul it down there and then have to haul it back if it's something that they're not interested in. uh also somebody wrote learn about the pomodoro technique helpful for staying focused not familiar with that but if that works for you that's awesome again encourage yourself start small you did not get where you are overnight uh if you're going to be working with somebody else they didn't get that way overnight. Uh, always be respectful when you're working with other people, which is always hard because you want it done. You want it done right now and they're slow about it. Um, and uh, again, any questions that you may have, please feel free to reach out to me via email on the handout is also my phone number. You can reach out uh, if you want to just have us come in and it give you an estimate. Um, we'll be more than willing to do that. We do not charge to come out. Uh, to do an estimate, um, but anything else? Uh, let's see, somebody put, most of our accounts are paperless so we can access our statements online uh, on and save them on the computer if we wish. Uh, and they only scan important hard copies. Uh, regarding online stuff, I believe and check with your bank, they only keep stuff online, I think it's 18 months. So if you can download it, um, download your statements and keep it so in case you need something further back, uh, then you have that uh, because if they don't have it available, I think they'll charge you to get it to you um, after that 18 months, uh, but confirm with your bank on how long they keep stuff. And you can always download it onto your computer. Anything else?
Yeah, I think, uh, Penny, we really appreciate you coming again. Uh, I think we could probably keep going on forever here, but <laughs> I think uh, you've spent a, a amount of time with us today and we really appreciate it. I, know, I think my head is spinning right now. <laughs> all the information you've shared with us. Um, and again, uh, thanks for coming for another year here and you'll definitely be uh, invited back in the future. Um, before we adjourn, let me just go over a few classes that are coming up next week. Um, these are all open to the public classes. Next Saturday morning uh, for this class, we're gonna have an orthopedic surgeon coming to talk about shoulder pain, causes and treatment. Um, and a couple of more open the public classes. We have a medical one next Wednesday, uh, seven o'clock at night. Uh, it's on screening procedures for cancer. And the third one is another open to the public. It's next Wednesday, February 3rd at one o'clock. It's a new series we have at Ollie. It's called Eclectics 2 and it's on diversity topics. And the topic for next week will be the Orange County Civil Rights History. So those are all uh, open to the public. You do not have to be an OLLI member. So please join us in those classes also. Thank you. Russell, someone asked in the chat if you could please tell us again where we find this chat after we save it on our computer. Okay, yeah, let me, let me just go over the process. That's a good question. First, save the chat today before you sign off, go to your chat, and on the right side, you'll see file and three dots. Go to that, click on that, and then click on save chat. So that's before you leave the class today. On your computer, in your where all your documents and files are, uh, Zoom sets up a special folder, and it's just called Zoom. It's a Zoom folder. Uh, you need to be on a computer to have that versus an iPad because the computer has the ability to store information in your documents. So that's where it is. Um, so anytime you go to a class and they do a lot of chat like today, it's a good idea to save it and have it available. Any other questions from anybody? How do you save on an iPad? You can't really save that on an iPad. Uh, they don't have the ability to store information there like a computer does. Uh, Joyce, Joyce did indicate in one of her chats that she was able to download the, the uh, handout today on an iPad. Yes, I well. <laughs> and um, so, so if your iPad is configured to work with iCloud, Sometimes you can download these things depending on the version. Okay, it sounds like if we don't have any questions, we're uh, finished for today. So thanks for everyone coming today and a look at our future classes that are coming up. <laughs>